Guys, Hello. can you describe your character and the part they play in this epic fantasy? Of my lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blushing. She loves a bit of chivalry. I you know? love the chivalry sometimes. Um, Catherine is this beautiful young, um, I'm not, she's, I, if I say beautiful, that means I'm like talking about myself. Okay, she is. <laughs> she's a bit of a looker, let's She's be this young, naive London socialite that has been brought up in the bubble of privilege. Uh, and she's the daughter of London's chief archeologist. And she suddenly gets woken up to reality and thrown in the deep end. And she makes discoveries about her father and about the world. And it really um, forces her to grow up from a young girl to a young woman. And, and we see that in the film. Robert. Nice. Well, I play uh, Tom Natsworthy, apprentice historian, third class, who um, his, his sort of day to day is going through the, the, the wreckage of stuff that London has salvaged from other small towns that they've essentially eaten uh, to try to find anything that's of historical value to stick in the museum. So he's kind of like, he's doing all of the kind of grunt work that the more senior historians wouldn't be caught dead doing. So, um, you know, he's quite, he's quite lowly in the strata of London, but has a great thirst for knowledge, you know, has a very active mind, like Catherine, and that's kind of what, wh mm. why they're together at the beginning mm -hmm. of the movie. And so, you know, again, similarly to Catherine, uh, kind of has his world turned upside down as soon as he uh, steps off of London and realises that, he needs to recontextualize himself in the in the greater world, you know. And mm. London is just simply this microcosm, and it's a more barbaric microcosm than he w once believed, you know. Yeah, you guys got to play on these incredible sets. What mm. is it like in this sandbox? Played hopscotch. <laughs> that Weta created for you. Yeah, they are it's incredible. Sandbox. They are so talented down there. It's mind blowing. I mean. You, I grew up watching movies that they've made and just to be there and and see it for myself and be able to even just be like the tiniest part in this huge machine that is Weta and Stone Street and Peter mm. Jackson, you know, you know one it's such an that, honor. that Peter told me, uh, he told, there's, there's an insect in New Zealand called a Weta, that's where the name comes from. Mm. And it's this kind of barbed, angry looking sort of... Almost grasshopper like grasshopper thing. Grasshopper thing, yeah. And he, he has a, I don't know, Philippa has a, a sculpture of a Weta being, being clutched by an eagle, this amazing thing in her house. But the, in the sculpture, the Weta insect is about, it's about this big, right? And I was like, are they really that big? And he goes, yeah, they are. Yeah, no, they definitely are. And I just totally believed him because I'm Because he's got gullible. such straight, bland humor and it's so funny. It's so monotone and he's hilarious. And you're just like, did he just, is he making fun of me? Or is he, what did he just <laughs> say? Oh yes. yes, he's definitely making fun of me. Means it's he likes hilarious. you. What was your favorite thing to shoot in this movie? Oh, it's hard to, it's a hard it one. It really is. It's an is. embarrassment of riches. I loved all of the stuff in the um, museum because it was so cool or, or you know when we're running I loved all of our scenes when we're running through the streets because the mm. streets that they created for us that they built for us are incredible and there's always so yeah. much to touch and Central look at and London. play with yeah. yeah incredible I liked um you know I, I, I I'd love to give mention to um, there's a there's a, a an underground town called Scuttlebot that uh, that Tom and Hester encounter and it's it's sort of driven by these two kind of unhinged lunatics called the Raylands, who are this sort of odd husband and wife, who again have have echoes of like kind of a Victorian London almost. Yeah, like they were so cool. I wish yeah. I'd have got to meet them. Really, and really lovely, two lovely actors. Yeah. Uh, and um, Scuttlebutt was this uh, sort of town that could that could bury itself like a bug underground, and like so a the, centipede. Yeah, yeah, and and so the, the, it had like a, a three section, like an insect's body. It had three sections, and the three sections did three different things hydraulically. You know what I mean? So if you stood at the back of it, part of it's going, and the other part's going, and the other part's sort of shifting around in another so cool. gyration, and it just it just really it was like an optical illusion or something. It was really fantastic. 
you know, and everybody kept projectile vomiting everywhere, left, right, and centre. No, oh we gosh. didn't. Now, everyone who has seen Raiders of the Lost Ark will tell you that the best scene in the film is when Indiana Jones is confronted by a skilled swordsman during a chase scene. Instead of picking up a sword and drooling with him as the script said he should, hmm, Harrison Ford improvised by pulling out his pistol and shooting the swordsman instead. It was all thanks to a bout of food poisoning that left Ford too sleep deprived and sluggish to do another big action scene.